I got a short rip today. Highways were dangerous. People were spinning out. And I've got this narrow slot I gotta get up. Didn't really see a better way in the bank. So we'll see how this goes. Now you can disregard that sign. I've got permission here. Go do a little maintenance. Boy, it is rock hard underneath. Just a little layer of new snow on top of complete melt freeze. I don't know if there's any softer stuff out back. We'll see. Anyway, I just feeling it. Want to do a little ride? It is nasty cement-like conditions right here. Quite a bit different from skiing Powell all weekend. Really good, really good snow for skiing. Had a really nice ski trip. Damn, I need to bleed the brake. The bike worked good, getting me up top. I think my fuel filter fixed. Got the job done. Whoa. This is some nasty stuff. Ice chunks flying. sheet Looks like someone's been tromping around up here. I don't know why they didn't clean off the panels. Could at least done a favor here. These are holding up in good shape despite all that crazy, crazy snowfall. Huh, yes, back in business. All right, did a little solar panel maintenance. Things are looking fantastic here, sun's hitting. All right, it is warm up here. Got my spring clothes on. Trying out a new goggle lens, which was completely the wrong choice for today. I thought it was gonna be overcast. That's what the cam was showing me. If you see my blackboard, the topic of the day is radio. I've been doing everything I can to get anyone I ride with to make sure to have a radio and getting them some inexpensive deals, programming them, whatever it takes. Because I think that's the number one most important tool that you should buy before you buy any snow machine um, of any type. Sticky conditions right now. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. The radios are the most important thing in my mind because really it's your buddies 
that are going to be the ones that save you if something goes wrong. It's not some entity out there like the uh, more or less incompetent search and rescue crews in the winter, at least around here. Now they can get to you, but it's going to take like days maybe. So you got to have your buddies there and I mean even if you flipped on a in reach or something which I've used and I've also activated things just take a long time and usually it's a matter of hours or less that you have to survive if something's really bad and it's especially if it's cold out and you got hypothermia setting in so most important thing is your buddies for safety Meanwhile, I'm saying that while I'm riding up here with no one. But anyway, usually I'm out with someone and not just for safety, but there's also the issue of, um, you know, wasting half a day searching for your friend that doesn't have a radio. Not sure where you last saw him. You could literally be doing laps around him trying to find them it is really hard and you cannot just yell especially if there's uh, uh, trees with snow on them your voice goes basically nowhere whistle is a little better you have a whistle on you a lot of packs have them but still you can your range is really severely limited oh, yeah ice falling off the cables So having that radio is really not even about you, it's about doing it for all the people you're riding with. So they don't waste all the fun on search and rescue missions of their own. I've seen it so many times when you're cruising around trying to find someone, can't figure out what track's theirs, they end up maybe back at the parking lot, they're waiting around, and you show up after wasting an hour or two or more and they're like oh what I was just here the whole time like that is bull when you can get a good radio for 20 to 50 bucks it's good for safety makes the day way more fun helps you communicate where you're gonna go it is the number one tool and guess what I've got a radio and I'm also using some other redundancies in case something does happen up here. I think there's going to be a little bit better snow off the backside here. So radio first, buy that, then buy your equipment. And I am not ever buying the excuse of Oh, we'll just stick together because that does not work. It takes like two seconds and you're separated and people hunting around searching for each other. It's not like being out on a road. You get separated so quick. So you buy that first. Then get your equipment. And uh, in reach or spot, that's a good idea too. But I don't think they're necessary like a radio is. I'm just hunting around for some softer snow and I'm not finding it anywhere. So then you can have your equipment and as long as you're riding in deadpan flat terrain you're fine without the avalanche stuff but who rides in fields in North Dakota even the North Dakotans is that what they're called they head out west hit up the mountains all the Midwesters um, ditch bangers they end up going to the mountains so you're going to need to get 
Avalanche Beacon Shovel Probe. I mean, you probably can get a shovel anyway, just for helping dig out or other things like that. But make sure you get a good shovel, beacon, probe. And once again, you're not getting these for your own safety as much as respect for the people you ride with because they have it and they're buried in an avalanche and you're sitting there twiddling your thumbs because you have no beacon you are going to be the ultimate douche you are not going to ever forgive yourself for not having that beacon when your buddy's dead underneath the snow because you couldn't dig him out I guarantee you are going to feel like a complete ass the rest of your life so buy the beacon not for yourself but for your friends so that equipment right there is essential you should not even think about buying a snow machine without a good radio snow's marginally softer back here good radio beacon shovel probe the other other thing is don't pick up a used beacon buy a new one it's not worth saving 50 or 100 bucks um, the older beacons especially like the tracker ones and stuff they have slower processors um, plus those antennas over time they do uh, what's the term for it de-attenuate or something they they start to lose their their effectiveness so if you buy a used beacon you are wasting your money buy at least something that's got most antennas possible three four antenna something newer yeah, I should go see if the bird's out here. Yeah, that's a great idea since the snow is pretty much crap. So those Bofeng radios, they're good radios. Even though they're cheap Chinese, I've put them to the test. They're good radios, inexpensive. And I have been programming them for people. I'm willing to program for anyone around here at no cost. Just got to buy the radio and I can usually have one. So I'll make you the promise that I can get your radio for $20 or $30 and get you the programming so you can talk to the BCA radios. Um, and I'll put some other emergency frequencies on there that you could use in an emergency. But normally you're not allowed to talk on them. But you can listen to them legally. So I will make that radio promise. Okay, where's the bird? I'm not even sure where the road is here. It's it's usually right around here. I think. Is this it? Yeah. I believe we are in the bird zone. It's beautiful out here. Hey birdie! Birdie! Where are you bird? I don't know, hopefully birdie didn't get killed.
Guess I'll get going, see if he dive bombs me somewhere. What I think we determined the bird is a Sandusky grouse. Friendly guy. Actually kind of friendly aggressive. Sometimes he takes a little while to show up. Haven't seen him yet this winter. I've been here a couple times. Okay, see these these mountains here, Blue Mountains, are pretty well rounded, not really steep and like the Rocky Mountains or Wallawa, Sawtooth, those kind of mountains. So a lot of people become complacent and don't realize this is another reason to have a beacon. Pretty quickly, you can be in a spot avalanche-wise that can kill you. It's not always a big, huge slope. It can be a really minor slope. Like, let's say we're right here, I'm cruising along. I drop off this edge right there. So, I know on camera that doesn't look very steep. But that's starting to get at right about the 30 degree mark or so where uh, it could slide. So that one's pretty safe because it's got a little run out, but it doesn't take much of a slope. Like if we drop down in here, things are really safe currently for avalanche in here. So, this doesn't have much consequence because, um, you know, if it, it rolls, if it slides down here, it's probably just going to rest where it flattens out here, and it's not going to dump a big pile of snow on top of you. But, let's see if we can find a different scenario where we have a dangerous terrain trap situation. Whoa, it is lumpy down here. Okay. So a terrain trap is any terrain that can cause the snow to pile up on top of you. Like that ditch, for example. Like on the other side of that ditch there, Imagine this scenario, it can happen real quick. You're not ready for it. You're in those trees, and I know it doesn't look steep on camera, but let's say the slope breaks even up above you, and the snow drives you down there, and let's say it flips you over head first into that ditch, or even on your, your side, or maybe even the machine on top of you, doesn't take much snow right there to just stack up on top of you and you are encased in cement and you only have if you're lucky 10 minutes maximum 15 or 20 um, the only way you're gonna survive longer is if you have a really good air pocket in there um, so maybe even the machine on top of you might help but um, you that little terrain trap see this ditch right here that's what can get people. You know, I get snowshoers sometimes. I mean, you're in this, what you don't think is a big avalanche slope, and on a little steep rollover, uh, people are killed by that. So that's why, even when you think you're in safe terrain, um, that's why you need your beacon, and you need to be really aware and see, see what's happening with a slope like that. And this is a kind of a minor version of it. I wouldn't be too worried about going into this ditch. But if you took this and amplified it just a little bit more, a little bit steeper slope, um, maybe I'll go find one. Uh, it's, a, it's a bad scenario. Or if it drops down onto a, a flat roadbed and a bunch of snow just piles up on top of you on that roadbed, that's a terrain trap too. Tree wells, those are, uh, actually those are the scariest thing in my mind is to, if you fell into a tree well, um, head down, uh, that's that kills a lot of people too. Now that's not an avalanche. Uh, beacon might be helpful in that scenario if someone really can't find you, but um, beacon's more for the avalanche because um, your beacon's only going to work about 
50 meters maximum away from where it happened, so it's kind of hard to even, if someone's in a tree well, establish a grid search. Um, but you could still do it. Um, beacon might save someone's life in a tree well if you could kind of at least see where their track was and maybe all kind of fan out and while you're cruising around hold the beacon or something. Um, you might be able to find them if you gridded the area. But it's more for like when you see a debris path avalanche, um, it helps you zero in on exactly where that person is. So the other thing is, it's not so much, uh, I mean, you, you, if you had a probe, you might think, oh, I could just go probe around and find them. Well, no, that doesn't work so well. You have to find them within 10 to 15 minutes, and that uh, that beacon, you want to get the lowest number possible. In other words, you are right on that person because you do not want to start shoveling even as much as three or four feet away from where they're at because you could waste 10 minutes easily shoveling um, just off course and that 10 minutes is how they die because you might have to shovel again over to get to them. You need to be at the lowest number possible, get that probe strike, make sure for sure that you have them on the probe strike and then start your shoveling and if it's on a slope you want to shovel in from the side to get to them but it's really important that you act deliberately find the lowest number possible um, you're getting that beacon right down there on the snow so if you if it says two that means they are and that's the lowest number you get that means they are two meters deep six feet think of how long that would take um, Rock Creek Rick was buried five feet down. It takes a long time to dig to someone that deep. So you have to have the lowest number and dig like hell. Um, once you're positive, that's the probe strike. You got to get them out as fast as possible. So your beacon it's for saving your buddy. Um, and then, uh, and it might save your life too. But think in terms of you're doing it on behalf of the group. It's uh, it should be the one of the primary investments uh, when you're out, even in somewhat flat terrain like this. I mean, it seems like nothing. You know, there's a creek bed down in there. Creeks are one of the worst terrain traps you can imagine, um, and you got to be careful about rollovers into creeks. And those can those can just slide. You know, just a little bit, stack up on someone, and once you're under there, you are you are done. Sun's starting to soften the snow a little bit out here, but it's still this like one inch of snow, one or two inches maybe. Got a little rain down lower last night, and then it's on top of a rain melt crust of some type that is it's a breakable crust. I'm so glad I'm on the quiver ski because. The Yeti ski would be, I would be home right now. I probably, I probably wouldn't even come up here knowing, I already know what the conditions were. Because it would be hooking like crazy in this stuff. So the Yeti ski, I mean the quiver ski, even though it's still not fun, and it's kind of sticky steering, um, I'm getting around. Gets the, gets the job done. So much more confident in this ski. I think the older timber sled ski would kind of do all right in this. I don't know, it's been a while since I rode that ski. Getting good traction though. Well, the sun's gonna soften it up though, this will be nice. Maybe we'll get some spring-like. Yeah, already it's starting to soften it. Some people 
online were complaining about how heavy the quiver ski is. I don't know that we've actually done a weight comparison between all all the skis. We need to do that because just holding it in my hand, it feels a little bit heavier than the Yeti ski, but really not much and makes up for all the other problems that the other skis have. But it really, I don't think, is that much heavier. And, um, you know, it is kind of a first production iteration of it, so I'm sure it could get lightened up some more. But I don't really think it's it's that much heavier, if any. But we'll have to get them on a scale. I've got a Yeti ski and a and one of these. Next time I pull it off, I'll get a precise weight on them. This is a cool meadow. I always mountain bike through every summer. Pick some huckleberries over here. It's a nice loop to take the family up. And it's also kind of a sweet meadow to get a view. All right, here we have an overview of huge terrain trap. Something that will will kill you for sure if so even like that road there's a road on the other side or there's a nice open bank over there if you were just dropping down just a little bit to have a teaser look over the edge you are in the start zone of an avalanche there and if that starts running it's going to go down through the trees um, take you and it probably that one is so steep it's like that slope there is probably uh, almost 30 degrees. No, probably 30, 35 when it gets steeper down there. And anything 30 to 40 is your prime avalanche uh, incline, decline, slope, um, slope angle. And it's going to carry you, and if the trees don't kill you through trauma, it's going to just dump you into the bottom of that creek bed. It's got nowhere to go, so all that snow just piles up right down there at the bottom um, if it goes full path and it, it was two years ago I was out on skis on that slope right there and it had avalanche there was a crown along the whole ridge and it could easily have been a slope I've seen people play on their snow bikes or even snowmobiles will side hill out on something like that and you are right in the start zone so that's a good example of a terrain trap that definitely I've seen that whole thing slide. And that one didn't quite make it to the bottom that year that I was looking at that one. But anywhere along here there's a lot of rollovers, there's a cool place to play right there. And if you just dip off the edge, you're on the bus so to speak. And these train traps, even in mountains like this where normally people aren't hill climbing this stuff, but it just takes a little bit of a dip off the edge or even like if there's a cornice out there and you're you park your machine on it that cornice could drop uh, or if you go walk over to take a look over the edge so those are little things i think that um snowmobilers snow machine users don't realize like most of the time you're on the safer stuff you can even do hill climbs on on uh slopes that are below 30 degrees or fun hill climbs and those aren't really going to slide usually um, but you can quickly, before you know it, if you don't recognize it, be in those terrain trap areas. And all around here, there are terrain traps, like even that little ridge over there. Uh, you could get on a side hill there and have something break off. So your radios going to be really no good to save you if you're buried in an avalanche, but the radios will also come in handy um, 
to coordinate the effort to dig someone out. You can radio your buddies, say there's an avalanche, tell them where it's at. Um, not sure what I'm doing here. get through these trees somewhere. Wow, this got thick all of a sudden. Let's see if I can get out of this cluster. I think I see a window. Thought there was a road right over here. And I'm not. Seeing it. Weird how roads can disappear. Get across this little creek here. Looked like there was some good tree riding in here. I don't think I've messed around in here before. Back to some crusty snow. There's just one pocket in there. Maybe it's where the sun was hitting. Yes, I found it. Good snow. This is my old track. Well, I heard there was another casualty to this weekend casualty of broken fork compliments of hitting a rock with the timber sl timber sled spindle and ski those things are just murder on forks they're so aggressive oh sweet here's the old uh old nordic loop sign it's kind of a shame we don't have a nordic system but oh well I wouldn't be able to do this right now. I'd be riding my fat bike on it. My bike is so light with no extra fuel can on it. So it's nice about having this oversized tank. short little rides I can go without it this is why a snow bike is so good the only downfall is just in bottomless snow huge three-foot dump you just can't go up a hill they're underpowered but you wait a day and everything's good and really around here that doesn't happen that much you know where we get just three days three or four days of non-stop snow and then the rest of the time, like this would not be fun on a sled right now. But I'm just cruising around like I got my own single track wherever I want to go. This is why I like the snow bike. And you can get around in powder, but it's just, uh, you just don't have the power to get up something really, even sometimes a minor hill. You just have to poach snowmobile tracks, and even the snowmobiles get stuck a lot in that stuff, but at least they can move. They've got the power to move, but the rest of the time, like this is fun out here on some really not great conditions for sledders. I mean, you, can, you can't even lean over your sled in this stuff. It's like that breakable crust. But I'm having fun.
nice day too. It's like, I don't know, like 31, 32 degrees. Sun just came out. Still have snow on the trees. Yeah, it doesn't get much better than this. Actually, yeah, it does. <laughs> Some nice fluffy snow. Oh, I think there's my track from earlier. I think I want to stay off this nasty um, side of the mountain that would have got more warmth and rain probably. Things were good back here. Some rabbit tracks. These are great conditions for the little critters. You can scamper across the top of the snow. Whoa, nice. That is a crazy uh, wind affected drift. It's like a race course in here. There's some whoop de doos This would be a sweet spot to set up a little racetrack. I'm no racer though. 